let's move on to our next topic of conversation, and that is the Super Mario movie by Universal. It is written and directed by Chris Melodondri. You guys might recognize this guy. He was the writer and director for... Oh, actually, I don't know if he is a director, but he is the uh, the mind behind Despicable Me, the movies, the Minion movies, which is a spinoff of Despicable Me, and also The Secret Life of Pets. The good news is Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Mario, Zelda, and all of the really big Nintendo properties, is involved as a producer. And the plot so far reads as follows. A fearless plumber named Mario travels through an underground labyrinth with his brother Luigi, trying to save a captured princess. Feature film adaptation of the popular video game. I could have probably told you that. But the cast, this is what I want to talk about. We have Alec Baldwin as Mario. Hulk Hogan as Bowser. Kelly Clarkson is Princess Peach. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson is Roy, one of Bowser's clan. What do you guys think? Just from just from knowing that bit of information, because I don't know how much you guys know about this movie release. There's not much information out there, but there's a full list of the cast. And these are just some of the names that really captured my attention. And I was just like, what? <laughs> you know, you were saying Hulk Hogan as, as Bowser. And I was instantly thinking uh, <laughs> Hulk Hogan coming out. Get out of my way, brother. <laughs> Boom. Right with Mario, right? <laughs> Get off my bridge, brother. <laughs> yeah, you well, know, I saw... Uh, he's got the voice for it. For Bowser. <laughs> I saw the a few videos. Um, I was a little confused on to which one was it, what it, it was. Um, but yeah, I was, the main thing is I'm like, are they going to have him talk? Cause I mean, I know they've had, uh, cartoons of, of TV series and they're talking and whatnot, but Which I don't know. It was just... <laughs> I've, I've never watched them. <laughs> yeah. I, I tried watching them uh, to my shame. I should have known <laughs> that just by looking at the date, it was like a oh, time I when was... cartoons were just absolutely dreadful i mean they all have like the worst the games alone i love i'm a big, big fan of mario yeah um, i mean who isn't they're the best but yeah. if you watch the cartoon and you were unfortunate enough to see those and you can never unsee them or unhear them they have like the most sloppy new york accents it is totally like racist towards italians and has like hey luigi let's go get a pizza and, and some cannolis you know, like super bad. Like that's how Mario sounds. I mean, you, you you've played the games. He clearly doesn't sound anything like that. But still, they get some like like hefty sounding New Yorker, right? Really trashy sounding. And then Princess Peach sounds like she's like one of the desperate housewives of New Jersey. You know, like it was just she terrible. Had, she had New Jersey. She's like, I'm from Patterson, baby. <laughs> you guys remember the, it was an it was a live action Mario, but it was super old where Yoshi was like pretty much a dinosaur. Oh, dude, wow. and then and then King Koopa was like that dude. Wasn't he the guy from Speed, the one that was gonna blow up the bus? Oh <laughs> yeah, uh, what's his name? I was like, like John Leguizamo was Luigi. I'm like, what is happening, dude? Like. <laughs> I, I I remember it vaguely. I just remember looking at Yoshi, and that dude's like a straight up T Rex. <laughs> I'm like, wait. He's <laughs> uh, Dennis Hopper. Yeah. Yeah, Dennis Lee Hopper. I'm like, man, why did they do this? Like, I I I swear they got people to make movies that hated these intellectual properties. Like, that is not the way you make Mario. <laughs> like, <laughs> why would you do that uh it's it's a travesty but i'm glad they are are working with universal i i happen to love uh the secret life of pets both of them um so i'm i'm kind of excited uh in some ways looking at the cast i mean 
I think they're talented voice actors, some of them. I think the one that threw me off was Jane Lynch from uh from Glee and uh she was also that really tough lady from um Wreck It Ralph. She's the one who likes Fix It Felix Jr., the one who says, Flattery, don't charge these batteries. And she kinda sounds like an old lady, you know? Uh and that's gonna be Princess Daisy. I feel like I don't know if they're going to go for that more kind of crude humor that you see from, like, the Illumination Universal movies. It's looking um, like it by the cast, so it's possible. Yeah. I think Bill Hader is Toad. Um, there's, like, a whole... There's a slew of comedians and uh, some people from SNL that do voices here, which kind of makes me worried for, like, it's how family-friendly it's going to be, being a Mario property. But I think the fact that uh, uh, Miyamoto, who is, you know, his heart and soul is in his Nintendo properties and he's holding them really close to his chest, I think he will keep them uh, faithful to their family-friendly image. I mean, they really are strict on that. So I'm confident in some ways in other ways, I'm kind of worried as to how family-friendly they will be. Um, I think they'll be true to the story, though, with him producing it. Yeah, the the cast, I didn't know the cast until you said them right now. Um, so that's, that is a little nerving. Um, it's kind of an off-topic, but it's kind of reminded me the cast for the Borderlands movie. Um, oh, yeah, what do you think of that? Oh man, that that's gonna be hard. I I'm a fan of the Borderlands games, and I mean I love Kevin Hart. He's a funny, funny comedian. <laughs> but to be playing somebody as serious as Roland, um, we'll see how it goes. And then I I know Jack Black I think is supposed to be playing the role for Claptrap. Um, but I'm I'm a little I'm very sketched with the um, the actors they're choosing. You know? so all they need is the rock, and they basically have Jumanji. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, oh man, I'm I'm really nervous. <laughs> about, I feel like about any video game, out. any video game adaptation or comic book adaptation either has the rock or Pedro Pascal at the moment. Like there is literally no comic book or. Uh, video game adaptation that doesn't have pedro pascal you know who was the mandalorian because he's going to be coming out in the last of us adaptation and he came out in wonder woman and a star wars movie like this dude has his hand on everything and if it's not him it's the rock you know what i mean the rock is going to come out in the dc universe he's going to come out in he came out in jumanji he's coming out in mario he's going to come out in in he came out in the fast and furious like dude he's coming out in everything like i'm sure there's something missing Oh, he I just came out. He's coming out in. Actually, about I guess they're gonna be doing a movie about his life when he was a kid now too. Yeah, it just got released. I think the first episode dropped. We're gonna watch it. See what happens. Matthias is obsessed. My son, he's obsessed with The Rock. So we'll probably watch it. See if he'll enjoy it. And he was Bambi. But... He was Bambi in an SNL skit. Did you see that one? <laughs> I'll have to, no. I'll, I'll link that I've one on, that. in the Discord. Oh, there was there was a goodness. lot of people in the comment section that would say I would pay so much money to see this movie. <laughs> they were I, I did watch that. It was like a cross between the Fast and the Furious and Bambi. It was quite funny. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Have you guys seen the trailer for Fast and Furious 9? The fact that there's a Fast and Furious 9 it it just bewilders me. But now they've moved on from The Rock since The Rock can't work with Vin Diesel anymore. They just can't get along. He did his own thing with Jason Statham, right? The Hobbs and Shaw spinoff. But Fast and Furious 9, get this. The villain is Dominic Toretto's brother. Wow. John, John Cena. Wow. I'm just going to let that sink in for a little bit. Dominic Toretto's brother... <laughs> After nine movies, his brother is John Cena. <laughs> hmm. Hey, uh, I gotta give it up to Hobbs and Shaw, though. I actually really enjoyed that. I mean, 
like John Cena. They're just working their way through the uh, the WWE lineup, and then once he's gone, they're gonna team up with John Cena and fight uh, Shawn Michaels or Vince McMahon. Who knows? Like at this point, the, <laughs> at Undertaker, this point. the Undertaker. Come on now, the, the Undertaker. Oh, I, more on. likely, it would probably be Batista, but Batista thinks he's too much of an artiste to work with these types. Well, he's a but, superhero uh, now. He's a guardian. Come on now. Well, he, uh, exactly. That's true. He's a guardian of the galaxy. He's his exactly. Fast and Furious stuff is beneath him. He doesn't want to be in the Fast and Furious. He's a really superhero. <laughs> he made it to Marvel. He's good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's like, see, oh, I got this. But, you know, speaking about how Nintendo likes to hold things close to their chest, uh, we actually recently found out that there was this poster plastered all over social media that Legend of Zelda live-action adaptation was going to be released on, in Netflix, like in 2023 or something like that. And then, I mean, people were like, this can't be real. No, this is real. Come to find out, it might have been real. But because it got leaked, and Nintendo's really weird about it getting leaked, they actually pulled the plug on a Netflix adaptation of The Le Legend of Zelda. Um, and they think that it has something to do with their partnership with Universal. Since they're working with Universal to make the Super Mario movie, and they're building a Super Nintendo world in the Universal Studios. There's a Universal Studios in Tokyo, Japan, where the Nintendo world is actually, like, there. We'll mm. put the video in um, on our Discord channel. Um, and it's really cool when you look at it. I mean, they have watches that are interactive with the question mark blocks, so that you can, like, put your thing on it and it shows on your watch that it activated and if you look on your phone on the app you'll see like what kind of coins or rewards that you got and all of these different mazes that are there and um the lines to the to the rides are interactive so they have different things like where you press it and you interact with certain objects that are there and um it it passes on information to your phone on the app so that you get rewards and you kind of go on a scavenger hunt and it's super cool interactive um it looks like it's going to be fun there's like a couple rides i think there's a yoshi ride there's a mario kart ride um everything looks like you're inside of a super mario game um so it's it's a beautiful aesthetically it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun um just being there is going to look like it's going to be uh, a lot of fun so it has been confirmed that they are uh, construction is underway in Universal Studios Orlando and Universal Studios in California. So it's something to look forward to. That might have been a catalyst to them pulling out their deal with Netflix, or it could have been creative differences. Yeah, um, but um, we are just not sure. Yeah, it sounds really awesome. I mean, I've I've been to Universal Studios. And Hogwarts and the interaction with the with the wands is actually really cool. Even though it's just like they don't have a lot of interaction, but the stuff you can do with the wand is it's it's pretty fun. So them for cool. them to take that and just to put it into like a Mario, like ten times as more interactive, that's gonna be awesome. That's gonna I could yeah. Like, that's gonna be so much fun. The cool thing is too. Uh, I think you get to choose which watch uh, you you have. So it's each watch, it will have like the color and the logo of a specific character. Like my kids all like different characters, you know. Um, uh, Hector, uh, he likes Yoshi. So they have a Yoshi watch. My wife can have a Princess Peach watch. I can have a Mario watch. Zeke loves Luigi. So of course he's going to have a green Luigi watch, you know, and they all have a different logo and different colors. So it's, it's super cool. It's customizable. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, the Super you know, Mario movie, have, like all characters, so you can even choose like Bowser or like Dry Bones, or you can use the little. Ghost May, and stuff. I think they might go as far as like Waluigi and um, Wario. Uh, I'm not too sure. I have to. We'll have to go back and look at the video. So viewers, I may not have all the answers. You'll have to go to the. Um, I may be speaking more than is available, but I do remember there being like I think at least four or five different options for the watch. Um, I think Nintendo secretly hates Waluigi, so there may not be a Waluigi watch because, I mean, he's not in Smash. They're definitely not going to make him a watch. So, 
Um, probably not a Waluigi one, but definitely um, Peach, Mario, Luigi, I think Yoshi, maybe Toad. I don't know. Uh, you'll have to watch the video. I was just saying, like, I'm, well, I mean, is it weird for me to say I'm kind of glad that they, like, pulled the plug on the Link um, adaptation? Because yeah. I feel, I feel like that's something where no matter what voice Link is going to have, it's going to be disappointing. Yeah. It's like a so... whole, it's a whole Master Chief thing again. Mm -hmm. As soon as you yes. see Master Chief's face, you're going to be mm -hmm. disappointed. As soon as we hear Link talk, it's going to be just like, Nope, that no, that's not what I envisioned. Yeah, because I mean everybody yeah. has their own imagination on that. So I just like that's 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 something hard. I mean, you kind of hear him say, "Hiya," you know, and the little grunts yeah. and noises that he makes. But that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that's going to translate to a fully um, animated voice. Um, it's very and, yeah. It, those are very hard to pull off. I mean, because you don't really get to hear it. For example, like one of the franchises franchises I'm a big fan of is The Witcher, and, mm -hmm. and but see you do get to hear him a lot in the game, and and I think that it was well done in the in the Netflix series. Now with with Link, you don't really hear his voice. Uh, the Master Chief, you don't see his face, and so we we're just so ingrained and used to that being a thing, so that when you do hear it, no matter how good how close it may be, it just won't be good. You know, it worked. For the Mandalorian in um, in the Master Chief kind of case, like when we we watched um, the Mandalorian, he was never supposed to take his helmet off, and then he finally did. You know, at first he helped, removed it, and he was all beat up. But the next time he did it, um, you know, he you could see his face, and it was kind of like, you know what, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think if as long as it's somebody who's very well like admired and or it's someone whose face is completely new um that and you help. can kind of you can like typecast it to where it'd be like oh that guy's forever now going to be master chief in my mind um that might work uh of course now it would have to be somebody who is um culturally diverse so that um everyone can be happy with it but um in the case of link i do think that they can make an animated feature uh where Link does not have to necessarily talk. I feel like Age of Calamity, Breath of the Wild, we're all okay with him never speaking, you know? And he's, but he would have to have like a companion character that kind of like, uh, kind of like a, what's his name? Uh, the um, Dandelion uh, and the Witcher character. You know how Dandelion's kind of all around for the comic relief mm -hmm. where like he almost, he almost is like the voice for him. You know, I, I love how Dandelion is, uh, I forget what he calls him in the actual show, but... Um, Jaskier, Jaskier, I think. Jaskier, yes. Like, you know how he's kind of like the comic relief that's just like another element of the story that kind of mm -hmm. makes you enjoy, like, the comedy side of The Witcher? Like, if you have Zelda always around him or, like, Impa and, like, just, like, now there's such a library of characters that can help you have the voice around a uh, Link or even... Um, mm -hmm have that's the fairy point. that's just around him where he doesn't necessarily have to do the talking there's a character that does the talking for him i think i can get behind an animated um feature film uh or maybe like that 3d anime look that breath of the wild has and just make uh, a film uh somebody even brought up i think it was on ign uh the nintendo voice chat that it would be cool if they did a tv series where every season was um a different game where like it starts off with as ocarina of time where it's young link kind of coming of age and then the next one you know or even do like ocarina of time majora's mask then twilight and then finish off ocarina of time and then kind of create like you were saying kind of like a linear story that leads up to you know what it is now um it would take a lot of work because i mean the Zelda and Link dynamic has changed so much over the over time, um, but I just feel like there's just so many characters now. The world has grown so large that there's a lot they can do, you know. 
they can focus on the the world that Nintendo is currently building around Link and Zelda and Age of Calamity and all that stuff. But uh, they have enough source material, they have enough characters to where something could work. I do think it was the right call to pull out from Netflix. I agree with you, Gabe. Um, so hopefully this doesn't mean the end of a Legend of Zelda adaptation. I do think live action is the worst thing that they could do for the Legend of Zelda. We've seen people try it. It's just not good. It doesn't work. They need to have an animated film for that or an animated series. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move on. Super Mario movie is slated for theatrical release in 2022. So we still have another year before we're going to see that in theater. Hopefully by the end of this year, we'll see some kind of either teaser trailer or something to help us look forward to it. 